Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at one of the very first Beretta 1934 pistols that was ever produced. And it has a particularly interesting additional feature on it, namely a slide mounted safety, and also a frame mounted safety. This seems odd. So the rationale here was uh, when Beretta designed this pistol they designed it with a frame mounted safety. And the whole conceit of the Beretta 1934 was to have a very simple, durable, easy to produce, easy to use, simple pistol. When they submitted this to Italian military trials it was pretty well received, but the Italian military had also been testing, like back to 1932, they had been testing the Walther PP. The Walther PP has a slide mounted safety and decocker, and it's it's not super complicated, but it's definitely more complex than any of the systems built into the 1934. The Italian military came back to Beretta and basically said, you know, we like this pistol, but we really like that decocking mechanism on the Walther PP. Can you like put that into your gun? At which point I'm sure Beretta made some spasmodic, like, oh, oh, why would you want that? Like, we have a simple, effective, nice, good pistol, and you want us to take some Germanic complicated mechanism and just put it in. You know, it doesn't work like that. But this is a huge military contract that they're trying to get. And so, all right, fine, we'll do it. They make a couple as an experiment, ten or a dozen or something, send them to the military. The military does a little bit of tinkering with them and goes, yeah, actually we really like this. So um, we want to consider this pistol more seriously for military adoption, and so they place an order for 650 of them. And Beretta at this point is trying to convince them not to use this stupid slide mounted safety. Um, in fact, Beretta's counter proposal is that they just add a half cock notch to the hammer, because the very early design didn't have that. It was fired and cocked and nothing in between. A half cock would add a, a nice bit of extra safety margin to the gun. So Beretta suggests that. Uh, and, and this goes back and forth for almost a year, wherein Beretta has this contract to make pistols, but they don't really have a definitive final ruling on what exactly what the configuration is supposed to be. So by November of 1935 they finally comes down and they get the, the decision. So Beretta started making the guns for this contract without actually knowing which safety mechanism they were supposed to be using. And they got part way through when they got a, a ruling from I think the defense minister, one of the officials involved in the trials, who said, all right, yeah, we've decided, leave the half cock, leave the frame mounted safety, and then you can go ahead and get rid of the slide mounted safety. This was very good news for Beretta, that's what they were really hoping to do, that is the system that really makes sense on the Beretta 34 pistol. And so they transitioned their production and stopped making slide mounted safeties. It is not documented how many of these guns they made. We know the total order was 650, and we know that only part of that order had slide safeties. So. It's kind of anyone's guess. Probably a reasonable hypothesis would be about half, something like 300 of these guns. So let's take a look at how this worked and why it was such a dumb idea, and then we'll come back and talk about what happened when these went to military trials. All right, so for comparison, here is our trials gun with its slide mounted safety, and here is a standard Beretta. This is actually a 35, but aside from caliber that's interchangeable. And I've removed the magazines from both of these just for simplicity's sake. So the way this is supposed to work is that in the forward position the gun can fire, like so. In the rearward position it is both on safe and it is able to be disassembled. So put the gun on safe. Just cock it to make it easier. Lock the slide back like this, and you can then push the barrel out rearward. We'll just go ahead and leave it in there. This is a pretty tight one. But that's how disassembly works. Now consider this guy. You've got a slide mounted safety, so in this position it will fire. In fact, in both positions the hammer will drop, but this is a hammer block safety, so it, uh, it prevents the firing pin from moving when it's in the safe position. But we still have to have this lever because, well, how are you going to disassemble the gun? What you're going to do is bring this back. So I should actually point out this has been reprofiled so that you can't actually pull the lever down like you would with a safety. Instead you have to slide, pull the slide back to about here, and then you can rotate the lever around, lock the pistol open on it, and then you can push the barrel back for disassembly. Well, 
What makes this a little funky and awkward is that in this position, let's see, if we just lower the safety, we can put it uh, back into firing mode here, except now, oh, now, because this is in the back, it is actually on safe. However, if I realize this, I go, oh, well, shoot, I need it forward to fire. Because this has been reprofiled, I can't actually rotate that lever forward. I have to open the slide up to about there, and then put the, the lever into the forward position. Now this one is in the fire position, that one's still in safe, so we'll up that, lift that up. Now, now the gun can actually fire. With that in mind, I think you can probably see why Beretta was so annoyed by this request for a slide-mounted safety. It was an unnecessary complication. It was, I think in their minds, clearly the result of some military officers who got all starry-eyed at the Walther PP and just decided irrationally that they wanted, you know, you could just drop that in some other gun, right? Well, engineering doesn't quite work like that. A couple things to point out on this particular example. Our serial number is 500,732. Uh, the Beretta 1934 serial numbers started at 500,000, so this is actually the, five, the 732nd gun. Uh, this was in the batch of the first 650 that were sent to the army as a trials batch. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that because this actually has a uh, Regio Ejercito, or Royal Army, stamp on it. And that indicates that it was actually one of the military property guns that was used in that initial trial, which is a really cool bit of uh, historical connection. Then here on the left side of the slide we have pretty much standard markings, P Beretta Cal 9 Corto, which is 380, which is standard for the model 1934, patented, um, made in Gardone. But notice that we have a 1935 slide date there, and then Roman numeral 13, which is the 13th year of the fascist regime in Italy, which is 1935. Um, that is just another confirmation of the very early production of this. While it is a model 1934, and so 1935 as a date doesn't seem all that odd at first glance, uh, the military didn't actually formally adopt this pistol until 1936. So this is, well, as we've already seen, uh, a very early example. So there you have one of the very first military trials Beretta 34s that led to the gun actually being adopted by the Italian military. In the trials in November of 1935, much to Beretta's relief I think, uh, the pistols did very well. They were very well liked, um, and the Italian military decided to go ahead and adopt them. And in 1936 issued a purchase order, a contract, for 150,000 of them for the Italian Royal Army. Uh, and that is, by the way, the version with just the frame-mounted safety. And that was then the birth of the standard Beretta Model 1934 that we're familiar with today. So this is a really cool and extremely rare uh, early trials version of, of that pistol, so really quite cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.